All right, guys, let's get started with episode three of Let's Color Grade. It's been a few weeks and I've been super busy, so uh, I've been a little bit stuck with not making any videos, but I'm sure that I'll be back to a regular schedule again now. And I really want to push a lot more videos on color grading and DaVinci Resolve and filmmaking in general. So let's get to it. The last episode was with drone footage from my own drone, kind of like taking underexposed footage and seeing what we could do with it. And I think it went pretty well. Today is a little bit different. So Luke on Instagram sent me this clip from the Mini 3 Pro, the drone, and asked me what I could do with uh, Mini 3 content. And I'll be honest and say, I wanted to test out the footage, see what I could do before, but I haven't had the time. And I thought it was time to make a video anyway. So what I've done is that is I've just imported the clip into DaVinci and we'll just take a look at it and see what we can do, play around with it. I know a lot of people are using the Mini 3 Pro, so let's just jump straight into DaVinci. All right, so we are inside DaVinci now, and as you can see here, this is a vertical clip, and it was actually shot vertical as well. So that's pretty cool with the Mini 3 Pro that you can shoot in vertical mode and get all the pixels, and I think the clip looks really good. Um, I've sped it up a little bit because we shot in 24 frames. So I've just right clicked it, clip attributes, and then it was shot in, I think, 23.976 frames per second. So I just made it into uh, 30 frames instead. And that means that it's just sped up a little bit. That's because I do everything in 30 frames. And since it's a drone clip, it doesn't really make a big difference. It's just a little bit faster. So I'm super excited to see what we can do with the color grade here. So let's just jump into the color grading tab. Let's close down a few windows to get a bit more space and we can actually drag it over quite a bit just because we have it as, as a vertical clip. So I'll do my usual steps here. And something I've actually started doing in like the past week has been to, I think I've gotten a little bit, uh, taking the color grades a little bit too far, I'll say. So yeah, I'm trying to dial back a little bit. So let's try and do something a little bit more subtle and see where we can get. So I've just done my usual note tree. You don't have to do it this advanced. I'll be making a video very shortly on like a simple note tree and like understanding the notes. Don't worry, it's coming. But this is my structure and this is kind of what I do per auto mode right now. So I've just done on the nine, ninth one, I've dragged down the color space transform. And let's just try and see, because I think this was shot in D log. So let's just try and take the D gamut and the D log converter. Maybe it wasn't. Oh yeah, it was. Okay. And then we choose Rec 709 and let's just choose Rec 709 again. Okay. So that actually already made a huge difference. And this, this looks really good. I liked it. So let's see how we can push it. So I want to push the shadows a little bit brighter. So I'm looking at the waveform down here. I'm trying to make sure that none of the shadows are really clipping or anything. And now we have some clipping in the highlights. So let's just try and drag the gain down a little bit and the lift up some more and maybe. And I think that's, that's pretty good. It looks a little bit too, you could say, faded again now. But that's just kind of like to correct the image. And now we go back into, go into the tone curve. And let's just dial this in a little bit to create the contrast that we want. Oh, I think this is starting to look really good. Yes, okay, so that's really nice. So that was our color correction. We went from that to that. And in terms of like converting the footage from D-Log or d like not sure exactly which one it was shot in. Let's use this one. And it is the standard like color space input and gamma input that DaVinci has. But I found that it, it usually works quite well. And then we just correct it. Um, so I actually made it a little bit brighter, as you can see. So let's start the color grading phase. And I'll do what I usually do, but I'll try not to go too much overboard. So we're going into the hue versus hue curve. I'm clicking all of these to get a point in each of the colors. And let's just see what we can do here. So let's start with the yellows. And I kind of like, I like that a little bit warmer look, especially because we got the warmer colors up here. So let's make everything a little bit more 
orange. Let's see what we can do with the reds. Don't want to go too much overboard, but maybe a little bit towards the yellows. The greens are oh, there. Not a lot of those. It's just dragging down slightly to make it more towards the yellows as well. The blues, I think we're gonna take those out in the saturation. So I'm gonna leave them as they are because they are mostly affecting the shadow areas. So I might just turn up the. No, actually, we're just gonna leave them alone. Okay, so let's head to the saturation, do the same thing, click all of these points to get a point in each. I think I want to increase the saturation a little bit for the reds and the yellows. And just drag it down a little bit for the greens. That's not really greens. The greens that you see are more yellows. And then I want to drag down the blues and the teals. And that made quite a big difference because now we got kind of like this gray in the shadows instead, which I prefer, at least in this case, or at least right now. And for the luminance, let's just see. Yeah, let's push it up a little bit and then push down the blue and the teal. Okay, so we got a little bit of a warmer, warmer look and we took out the color in the blues from the shadows. So that's basically what we've done right now. Let's go into the color warper just to see if we want to adjust something a little bit. So I think we want to drag the reds a little bit towards the yellows. That didn't really make a big difference. I might just desaturate them a little bit. Make the yellows a little bit warmer. Now maybe turn them towards the greens. Yeah doesn't make a huge difference and then again I just want to desaturate the blues and the teals so it didn't do much it made a slight difference so it's a little bit warmer again now I think it's okay so what I usually have done now has been to go to the primary reels wheels sorry and then color grade these like a lift the gamma and the gain and then do the same thing with the log wheels but I actually found that I think it, it gets a little bit too much when I do it like that. So I, I tend to leave node six and seven for now. Um, and then I'll just go in, I made a new shortcut for myself. Um, so option A now makes a parallel node. So I'll just make four of these. You might only need two, but now we have four. And the first thing I wanna do, the light looks like it's coming from, it actually looks like it's coming from out of this camera. So let's just see, yeah. And as we're rotating, that might actually be a little bit funny. Yeah, so the light is definitely coming from over here. So we might have to animate that. But let's just take our frame in here and then make a nice circled oh, power window. Why can't I hit? There we go. And let's just click Shift H to see what we're actually doing here. I'm gonna soften it up some more. I actually just wanna soften it up to like 100. And then we wanna do it like so. Okay. Then we wanna turn up the gamma. And again, just a little bit. This was maybe too much. Let's just see what we've done. And then warm it up. So I wanna warm it towards the kind of orange reds. And this one a little bit more towards the magenta as well, like so. That looks, this looks really nice, I think. I really like to make these masks with where like the sunlight comes in. But now I'm curious to see because since we got the light coming from that direction, yeah, so it turns a little bit funny here towards the end. So one thing we could do is that we could just consider if we actually want to use the clip all the way or if we want to just leave it. Um, I don't know how long it was. Yeah, so it's quite long. And usually what I do is use it for reels. So I think in this case, we could try and animate the mask, but I think that's a little bit too much for this one. So let's just go until like here, the 14 second mark, I think, and just click W to ripple delete. You could also just like cut it and uh, delete it the right part. So I think, yeah, I think this is better. Okay, so let's go back to our hero frame here. 
and let's counterbalance what we've done with another power window. So I went to node nine now. So let's just move this up, extend it down, rotate it a little bit, make it bigger, like such, maybe zoom out a little bit, just using the scroll wheel for that, or like in my case, I use a touchpad. Click Shift H to see what we're doing. And I think we wanna kind of just like go here. And I like to feather this out to get this effect. I think this is pretty good. And then we just wanna go to our primary reels again and turn down the gamma. Turn down the left a little bit, but I don't want to lose these details in the shadows. Um, might turn down the gain a little bit and turn down the gamma a little bit more. I think that's nice. And maybe put a little bit of blue, green, blue greenish into the left. Do the same with the gamma. I don't want to go too much over it. No, let's leave the gamma alone. Okay, so I think that's pretty nice. Let's just see what we've done. Kind of, you can see we changed the light. And actually from seeing it like this, I think we want to take the power window here and we want to extend it down. You can see like it's just getting a little bit more of the warmth in here, like so. And maybe rotate this a little bit again, blend it more. So the cool thing about these parallel windows are that they blend it together very well. Not like when you try to put layers on top of each other in, for example, Premiere Pro. And just drag it out a little bit more. Maybe adjust the colors, just to make sure it's not, don't want it to be too much, just right. I think that's pretty nice. Let's look at it like this, yes, pretty good, okay. So I like this so far and let's see what else we can do. So we could try and highlight some more of this this building that we have in the middle. I have no clue what building is. I hope it's not a really famous one that I'm supposed to know. Um, not that good with history. All right, so let's just see what we can do here. So actually what I like to do sometimes is go in and make a custom curve. So let's just zoom in and just see if we can create a bit more contrast inside of this. We can, that looks pretty good. Maybe warm it up a tad, just a little bit. Give it a bit more gamma, turn down the left. And look at that. I made a quite big difference to that. Okay, that's pretty good. And I kind of want to, so this area up here, I want the focus to be in here. So I think we'll do two more masks. That was a mistake need to get my new shortcut in. Okay, so I actually want to see if, I think it works fine if we do that. So we'll do the same thing as we did up here, but just for the bottom. So let's just make another mask, drag it out a little bit more, drag it to the bottom, click Shift H, drag it up. And I just want to lower the gamma, Lower the gain a little bit, maybe lower the left, but now we start to maybe have some clipping down in the left corner. So what I want to do is I want to take the qualifier. I don't really want to qualify anything uh, up here, but I'll take the luminance. And kind of if you click Shift H, you can see what we're doing. I want to take the luminance and then I just want to, you can see now we're getting the darkest areas around here. So I want to lower this, like make it low soft, like so. And then just drag it out so like now we're kind of not affecting the darkest parts and it's still a little bit too much so i might just drag it up a slight bit more you can see how much we're still doing but we're not losing the details in the darkest areas anymore as we were before so this is kind of like a trick to preserve either the details in the shadows or the highlights but you still want to darken the area around i love to do this i think it's a quite a cool trick and i just recently started doing it so that's why i'm not doing it in this one as well okay so we'll do a last power window up here drag that up here drag it up a little bit more it's kind of 
uneven, but I don't think it matters too much. Okay, click Shift H, see what we're doing. We're gonna drag this down like so. And I might do the same thing here actually. So click Shift H again, make sure that the brightest parts like so are not as affected. And just drag out the soft high. And just around here should be good. Drag down the gamma a little bit. Drag down the gain. Drag down the lift. See what we're doing. So we're softening this up. Maybe not the gain actually, because then we're losing a little bit too much of like the, the light up here. Maybe just play around with the temperature. No. Okay, so we wanna put up the gain. I just kind of wanna match the other color so that it's not just a flat like gray vibe also don't want it to be too much so i think this this blends together pretty well it's not really the important part of the clip uh, so let's see what we can do here yeah i think i think that's pretty good we warmed up this a little bit more gave it a little bit more contrast but i think this stands out a little bit more now let's just see what we've done with all these masks quite dramatically changed the mood. So now it looks like a proper sunset or sunrise. I think that's I think that's pretty good. And if we go back to our color grade, you can see we actually have quite, we have done quite a lot. Oh, wait, we have one, one other thing next. Yes, yeah, so you can see that the colors are changing quite a bit. Um, I don't like this warmer look. I we were going up i knew we were going for kind of like a sunset vibe um so that's why i made all the colors a little bit warmer but seeing that this is the mini 3 pro i think this is i think this is pretty good um i really like i really like how this turned out and i think the quality out of the drone is really good i think the, the um the focus on the building is really nice um yeah i really like how this turned out and then we might see if we have, do we have some clipping now? The shadows up here. I actually think we still managed to preserve the detail up here. So we could play around with that. Um, but I think it's, I think it's okay, actually. Yeah. So obviously it's rotating around and that might make, make the mask a little bit funny. We could have taken and said, okay, so when this, rotates around we wanted to move so we could have a keyframed the movement around but i think again that's a little bit too advanced for what we're doing today so i actually just wanted to see what we could do with the dji mini 3 clip i think we did pretty well i mean if you're looking to get a drone or you have this drone already you can do a lot with this footage i'll say especially if you're shooting d-log i mean this looks great i even like this frame with the color grade and everything this looks I think this is really good. Really like this. So I think that's it for the color grade here. Very nice. Thank you, Luke, for sending in the clip. I'm super stoked to be able to play around with this now that I don't have the Mini 3 myself. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed the color grade and that you learned something new. Um, this is an amazing drone and I know that there's a lot of people using it. So I'm really happy to color grade this and Hopefully I can make some more in-depth videos on drone footage uh, in the future as well. But that's it for this one. Um, really enjoyed making this color grade and I hope you enjoyed watching as well. So until the next time, take care.